This session is brought to you by Zurich Life and Investments. These guys are one of the last true independent life insurers going around and they're Swiss, so you know their stuff is solid. These guys really understand and believe in the value of advice, which is why they invest in programs like this one and partner with groups like XY Advisor to help drive the positive evolution of financial advice in Australia. Their team are just really good people as well. So if you haven't already connected with them to learn more, check out their website or speak to your business development contact. This session is also brought to you by Sun Super. They're one of the fastest growing profit for members or industry funds in Australia. They were the very first of these funds to partner with advisors and they've got functionality where you can actually link to your client's Sun Super accounts and charge advice fees through the fund, as well as a number of uh, tech innovations to make it easier for you to work with your clients. They've got great investments, they're really, really cheap, and their team are just generally legends. So if you haven't already connected with Sun Super, give them a shout, because they're doing some really cool stuff. James Millard. Hello. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. Welcome to the XY Advisor podcast. Thank you very much for New having me. New and improved. Yeah. What do you think? Pretty bloody excited, to be honest. Yeah, yeah? Yeah. I love it. We're in a very cosy room. It is pretty cosy. It's, it's nice how you guys could just shuffle up right next to me. And keep it close to you. Yeah. We're a yeah. tight bunch here. Yeah, so mate, tell us, New Year's, what'd you get up to? Uh, New Year's, with a 10-month-old in my life, I've used her for every excuse. Uh, she's my excuse this year, so... Uh, we did absolutely nothing. Yeah. I caught up with family during the day. We had a few drinks and that was about it. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very low key. I think you were saying before you're trying to do dry January. I'm doing dry January. Um, it's the, it's the ticket for me to kick off the year in a big way. I did it last year, um, off the back of a fairly heavy, silly season. And, uh, this year, again, the daughter was the excuse. So I got away with, um, missing most December events, which was nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we used, used a January, I'm using January to, uh, to stay healthy and, uh, try and surf more, do some yoga and, uh, kick the business off. There's two types of dry Januaries I've, I've noticed. Um, there's the, there's the hard dry January where you actually dry the whole time. And then there's the sort of dry January. So far, so good. Yeah. Are we a hard dry January? Yeah. Cool. Because I so think Layton's doing a dry January, but it's more of a... It's a soft dry January. One one drink a day <laughs> dry January. <laughs> that'd, that'd be an improvement for me usually, but yeah. um, this, so far, so good, we're, we're hard. Oh, I'm, really, so, I'm really proud of you, James. This is a big step. I appreciate that. <laughs> what's uh, what's server time afforded you? Have you been spending time with family more, you know, business uh, stuff? No, write, writing blogs and yeah, and yeah. Uh, creating, trying to create more content. Uh, we we for the first time ever we sat down with Yolo and actually put a proper marketing plan. Well, we're calling it proper because it, we started from scratch, <laughs> um, but a better plan in place to yeah, create yeah. better content and and do some challenges and a few things like that. Is um, there anything in particular that's cool and new on that plan? Uh, I don't know about cool. You guys can decide <laughs> whether that's whether that's a word you'd use to describe it. But we're we're running a series of challenges. So once a month. Uh, mm -hmm. doing a, a different challenge. Um, it's a list building exercise that hopefully an engagement um, using email, building the list on email, but also um, your videos through Facebook and in Instagram as well. So, so is we that talking the bucket list challenge it is, that I saw, yeah? Yeah, so that's January. Um, February is more around fitness. So they'll be going through things like money fitness, mental fitness, that side of things, and we'll get into things like savings and debt as we go. We're trying to create or keep keep the um, the lifestyle aspect, um, but obviously the money side is what people are here for. How's the bucket list? How's it work? What do people do to get engaged? And... Um, so they uh, there's a there's a template that is a is the bucket list. So it's helping create and and look bucket list is probably you know for the tech the techies out there it's not the right word for it because it's 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 2018 we want you to focus on what are you doing right now what are you going to achieve this year um and we've categorized it with a few different ideas and and some examples and so the challenge is is pretty simple complete the template <laughs> fill in fill in your goals and actually write them down because um I, you know i know with you guys you, you'd know when you sit down with a client it's the hardest thing is getting real goals out of them real you know what are they trying to achieve and how are we going to and so mm. that part of it is you know, they're, they're happy to tell you that they need to pay off their credit card and save tax but when you get into their personal lives 
uh, we found that's really difficult. So this challenge is, I guess, just putting it out there to say, hey, guys, as financial advisors, we don't just deal with your money. We're trying to help you get in touch with the, th- the stuff that comes before that. Mm. If we can get that right, then we can help you plug that solution in. And how, so that I guess this is for existing clients and also, you know, going out to prospects and yeah. that sort of stuff. So we, we, we sent the email to everyone on our list, which is a, a combination. It's probably about 20% existing clients and, and mostly prospects. Um, and we've blasted it fairly heavily on Facebook so far. And do you have follow-ups off the back of that? So in terms of click, if they click a link, it then means that they get something else. Yeah, so we started with the lead pages. So so through Facebook, it would, it would be click the link or through the email, click the link. Mm. That goes straight to lead pages. Mm-hmm. Um, which is just a static page that then has an um, email wall, put the email in, the email then sends you the link to the download. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, and from that, we've got a couple of follow-ups. So four days after, we send a, hey, how are you going? Have you downloaded it? Where is it? Is it on the fridge? What have you have you done with it? Can we help? Yep. Um, and other than that, it's just a, a couple of videos. So we're doing a weekly video on Facebook um, that will then... I guess, follow up on that. Andrew's got one that just went out today, which is a reminder more than anything. Um, but we're going to do one at the end of the month with how we've all gone with our own bucket list as well. Actually, that's a, that's a good point. Like you've got, you guys have three advisors in your um, practice. How do you um, tailor this communication? Do you like, how's that work? So we've, we sat down and again, part of that planning around the marketing was to create a couple of avatars. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, it's it's hard for us to say we're just dealing with a certain demographic. That niche idea was always something we we've been challenged with. We knew we needed to do something along those lines, but mm. how do we how do we niche when there's three of us in different demographics, different age, mm. and so mm. forth? So, um, creating three different avatars and and it's it's more someone in their late twenties to thirties, forties, and then fifties. Mm-hmm. Who is that person? What do they look like? What are their problems? And how do we help them create? How do we create a transition? for them and so yeah cool yeah the whole plan it started there and then it was all like how do we create challenges that are actually going to help these people and we're not completely wasting our time as well as that so in in that journey do you identify who they are somehow or is that how they slot into each of the and then you tailor what they get so if they're a bit older they might get andrew (laughs) so we've left so we've got videos on our website so everyone can meet us before they reach out so if, if someone's on our website or if someone's looking around on facebook they'll they'll be able to kind of get a bit of a feel for who we are mm. um and we found people self-select fairly early on yeah. so it's not a, it's not a lead coming in saying i want someone to talk to me they've found andrew online and and they want to talk to Andrew. yeah cool mm. i guess it's kind of the nice thing right about having three different advisors from you know totally different mm. walks of life and you know there's someone for everyone right absolutely and mm. look that that sounds beneficial and there's certainly a lot of benefit to it um it also has its challenges so the marketing plan is not is not straightforward you've mm. got to you've got to try and find a way to bring in those different aspects and that's where the challenges will cover i mean a bucket list is really for anyone but we, you know, our challenge is now how do we talk to those people? So when there's three different groups out there that we're trying to talk to, or individuals mm. even, mm. Um, how do we target it for that? So yeah, the variety is key. And have you had? Are you happy with kind of the traction and you know where where that's come, or is it kind of a bit of a slow build? Because you know we we're saying earlier there's still heaps of people. I find that's on leave, and you know I'm getting a lot of out of offices still. Even yeah, it's you know, totally. we we sent the first email on the third of January, and that was too early. We, we <laughs> definitely should have waited. Yeah. Um, as far as happy, we I have no idea what we're we're not really benchmark. We've got nothing to benchmark it sure. against. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the most our list has grown since we started. Win. Um, so that's that's <laughs> yeah. a good start. Nice. But in saying that, it's the most activity we've put into it and effort. But mm. um, we, we had about forty get on board so far. Wow. Okay. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have a different challenge every month. So hopefully that appeals to a different sector. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know some people might go look the bucket list in for maybe maybe the fitness idea. Yeah. Mm. Does resonate. How does how does this compare? Because you 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 have been running, um, I guess, a blog and uh, generating an email list. How's it compared to that? And what's the? Um, so look, to be honest, both of them, like the the sufficient funds, the blog hasn't had a lot of promotion. So I, I set that as a challenge for myself to see if I could write a blog. To be honest, to start with, and then and I set a weekly commitment so mm. I could try and keep that up. 
um, the the basics of that was map out the chapters of the book I'd want to write and write to it. Yeah, and, cool. And so um, I found with the business is only three years old and so we, we're in startup mode still. We're mm. still in trying things and testing things and growing it and getting the income to a level that we're all comfortable to you know, leave, manage it a bit more than rather than just work in it. And so that that's still a work in progress. Yeah, um, sure. It's all going in the right direction. Are you enjoying it? Like do, doing the blogging and all that sort of stuff? And Yeah, loving yeah. loving the challenge. I, I work best with a lot of pressure. Um, and if I don't have that, I, I struggle. Yeah. So I need to put myself under pressure. And so that blog's certainly done that. Um, well, and the advantage is um, you've got your better half as a backup blogger as well. She's pretty bloody good, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. um, I, you, know, you guys give her way more credit than I do. But <laughs> she... <laughs> She's the shit list of the XY Bias podcast. Yeah, she ordered this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tash edits things and and uh, and has written a couple herself, which uh, got more traction than some of mine. So nice yeah, to be of a spike in there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so what, what's the? I mean, what's the content on? So like for people that don't know you and the business, yep. you obviously got YOLO Financial Services. I think it was the the last uh, awards, the IFA awards, where you're saying. You know, took a leap of faith with, with the business name and sort of, you know, went to make a statement with that. And yep. that that's kind of, you know, you know, that's obviously worked worked for you guys really well. So YOLO's worked really well in the sense that a lot of people we've actually, believe it or not, you've actually had to explain what it means. Um, and <laughs> but when you do it means, you know, it's pretty obvious and it yeah. clicks. So instantly, especially you know, the older generations, they you you explain it and you link it to the money advice and 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 it's it's clicked for them and that's, yeah, cool. that works really well. Better um, more more than giving them a Drake CD. <laughs> exactly right. Mate. <laughs> Avoid that. Um, but the sufficient fund side of things has been um, more. Uh, I, it's hard to censor me at the best of times and we're doing well so far, but um, <laughs> Sufficient Funds is my outlet to be a bit looser. Yeah, and, cool. And so YOLO is about the three of us. It's not about just me. And mm-hmm. so we've got to, you know, we want to keep that to a certain level. Um, and uh, But from the from the blogging perspective, it's a lot more about um, my, my general niche there or the niche there is young people. Um, and the asterisk on that is that, young at heart sure still qualify Get right it. so yeah. so what about what about some of the things that you've been sort of uh talked back from the edge of in terms of doing videos on in yolo for the for the guys that want to have a crack at something a bit wilder out there what are, what are these ideas that maybe you've had to sort of park to the side <laughs> i think it's probably my potty mouth more than anything it's not necessarily the ideas um the guys that like everyone's awesome with the that as far as yolo goes we could we, i mean we can take that to the edge as well but so would a gopro uh video at, at the back of uh, the surf break up on the northern beaches there would that, that fit into yolo or? that sounds pretty good i should have had it out there this morning it was pumping <laughs> yeah, it would have been. um so yeah look the i mean i think if i was doing that that'd be a sufficient funds thing but who knows so what i mean uh, so obviously loose with language but what what is what does sufficient funds do that it, that yolo isn't like what where's the distinction um, so there's a the, it's a lot broader it's not just money so i think right. so I, it's lifestyle what, yeah where that came from is my story is more around um you know th- there's been a career path there's been setting myself up personally there's been the marriage and kid and other things that you know, uh, yeah, there's a financial advice aspect to it, but my goal with that was more helping young people get off the ground faster, and mm. it's not necessarily just money. Um, and and look, my interests are greater than than financial planning. Yeah, and yeah. so one of the hardest things as an advisor is you can't you you're always trying to achieve the same thing for a client. You're helping them with their money, which I love doing. Yeah. Mm. Um, but that's part. And so I guess for me. Uh, you know, the last few years, especially starting YOLO, it's been a lot more, you know what, we don't have to wear a suit and tie if that's not us. You can do whatever you want. I mean, I'm sitting in thongs. And I'm th- I don't know if you guys um, gave me a dress code, but I I, I, I probably would have ignored it. We're going to cut the video. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but you get to be authentic. Yeah. You, and you can tap into what you know, what makes you tick. And I think that's where sufficient funds is probably just taking that to another level. Um I've got a big challenge in there to actually dedicate some time to growing it and and promoting because at the moment it's just it's it's really just keeping it up. But well, the other thing is if you went all the way to FinCon, like 
you have got to justify that return on investment. I guess you you spend a bit of money to go over there, yeah. learn a bit. That's true. Was that You're, kind of a kicker for you? You know, to see what the guys are doing in the US and yeah, bloody hell, it's not. You know, I can do this. I, so I went to I went to FinCon twice. So 2016 was very much about that. That was launch the blog right after it yep. and um, meet a lot of people, see what they're doing, all the crazies that are that are not financial advisors. They they're just sharing their own lessons. Whatever they they've paid mm. some debt off or they. Um, they've invested really successfully in real estate or they've retired early and they're just telling their story. Yeah, cool. Um, so the attraction there was no one here is doing that sort of thing, right? So mm-hmm. um, there's a there's an amazing opportunity to open up and, and I guess switch people on a little bit. And so that was one part. Um, and yeah, so like, yeah, the sufficient funds side of things started there. To be honest, I got I got a lot out of the latest FinCon, and we took we've brought a lot home. And we've used that with Yolo. Yeah, cool. Um, and I'm not just saying that to justify the <laughs> <laughs> or the next one. <laughs> uh, are you lobbying for a bit of uh, co-funding for the next trip? Is it <laughs> potentially? <laughs> I, look, I'd love to go and check out some other conferences. I think yeah. there's a lot of like some of those social media conferences in the states are. F- oh, look mate, it's phenomenal. on another level, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I'm kind of um, keen if I can just to. Oh, I was just going to say Lola Palooza. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for Burning, Burning Man. Man. Yeah, Burning Man. Um, I, I, I've, I've heard some um, some really famous uh, financial services individuals have been out to Burning Man, like Alex Vikovic. Uh, they've had a good time. That's so. not fair. <laughs> One of the really big bloggers, Paula Pant. Paula Pant goes every year. She's massive. She's a huge blogger um, and a crazy Burning Man fan. Yeah. yeah. What's her name? Paula Pant. Okay. Mm. And she, Finance? Yeah, she. I don't. I don't know the numbers. I'd. I'd. I'd be guessing, but she's. She's got thousands and thousands of followers and yeah, does some pretty cool. cool stuff. What would you trade in Burning Man? Not sure. <laughs> What's the deal with the trade? <laughs> oh, yeah, like a lot. It doesn't really have a currency. You just sort of get out there and um, like people will swap clothes for stuff. Nice. Um, whatever you got. Back um, to basics. Yeah, what? you oh. could probably take a couple of surfboards that you don't want anymore. Um, Who knows. <laughs> Not Sounds very like useful fun. out in the Nevada no. desert, but it's a- <laughs> so I'm kind of keen if I can. Um, you mentioned that the the blog was was starting to talk about the content that you want for your book. Yep. Um, and telling your story and that sort of stuff. So I'm kind of keen if I can to you know if you're happy to share, of course. Of you know, course. Let us know some of the stuff that's that's you know in your mind there. Because that that I think I think then that that kind of is you as a person and breaking away from the business and you know sort of. So. Look, I, I think the the biggest thing for us as advisors is it's really difficult for us to get the idea of storytelling, and and so I drilled that into myself through you know things like FinCon and and just un, like I, I subscribe to that idea the 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 ability to tell stories and and so from that um, you know where where all this where the, where that name came from initially was we did a road trip around the states I went to uni I did a semester in Canada. Um, 2004, three of my mates went, we all went to different schools, finished up, bought a thousand dollar car, um, one of those wooden panel Chrysler LeBaron awesome. and, uh, we'd written all over it. We had stickers all over it. Um, it was around the, uh, oh, I can't remember what it was when it, America had just invaded someone and one of our Canadian mates had put a big, I love Iraq on the back. <laughs> um, <laughs> And you're uh, in Canada for that time. That was... Yeah, we, so we drove around the states. Oh, so we, we, <laughs> we took two months to drive around Jesus. the states. How um, long did the sticker last? <laughs> it oh, we we had it on there the whole time with it, with a surfboard on the roof as you well. You obviously didn't go south then. <laughs> we did, funnily enough. Jesus. Um, but one of the things we did there was sell some t-shirts. So um, one of the boys had just come away from the ATM with the insufficient funds slip, uh, and so that became the name of our clothing company. We'd plan to uh, just uh, never work a day in our lives and sell that to Billabong and make millions and, and <laughs> just move from there. But it didn't happen. We all came back from the road trip. We got jobs. We I ended up in the finance industry. Ten years later, I'm looking back on that now saying, okay, well, it's the journey from insufficient to sufficient. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, that's where that's going. <laughs> insufficient funds. I love that. That's fantastic. And motivation for the for the book, is that kind of... Because I, I get it, right? I've you know, I've, for for those that I know who've written books, it, it seems like it would be really yeah, Clay. It, it seems like some something that you'd it'd be taught like you you'd torture over it. But I feel like off the back of that, it would be so rewarding and you know, almost like a psychological weight off your shoulders. 
Yeah, know, so there, to, there's that element of getting myself out on paper and just giving it to whoever wants to read it. Yeah. But, you know, and that may be no one. Who knows? But um, the the others, I mean, it, let's not joke and beat around the bush. It's the, probably the best business card you could have. Yeah. Um, and so uh, paint, like the ability to put yourself out there as an authority in the money space, uh, a book does that really well. Mm, mm. Um but yeah, I think you've got to want to do it. And the only way I could, I couldn't write just a money book, to be honest. And so the only way I'm going to be able to do that is if I link it to a story that I actually care about mm. and, and then, you know, connect the dots from there and make it, at least try and make it valuable. Yeah. Well, they talk about it as the thud factor, to be able to drop something. Exactly. In front of the client. Yeah. Mm. No, I feel uh, like there's a, there's a comment, you know, about gen being genuinely authentic with that stuff as well, right? It's... You know, yeah, you're, you're not just doing this stuff to create the image of someone who's, you know, leading a life that's true to themselves. You are. <laughs> yeah, I think. Look, and and the ability, all you need to do, like, you don't have to be like, I'm not shooting the lights out in anything. We're just doing what we're doing. But if you can stop and take some lessons out of that, and that's what yeah. I've tried to learn to do, is just say, what did we get out of that? Um, like some of the best books I've read, I know, I cannot remember the name, but I'm sure we can put the link in the comments, but. Um, is a book by an astronaut, uh, and I think it's something like lessons, life lessons from space, or something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll like you, or? no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but like he, he just tells his story, but from that you're picking up lessons as you go, and and so that was that was you know one of the things. It's not an advice book. You're not going out and saying do this, do this, do this, do this. Um, because some a lot of people don't. It's it's hard to get that to resonate with people. I yeah. think, and for me, I would yeah. struggle with that. We well, think back to when you were twelve and your parents told you not to do something. You're like, well, I'm I need yeah. to learn that lesson. You, know? you just do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so to that end, storytelling, right? You sort of touched on something before. I suppose you got some views on, you know, financial advisors perhaps being better at better storytellers and using anecdotes to. I just, I mean, I mean, we we all do it. And, and we've all been there, whether we're there now or, or not, is we all take ourselves too seriously. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And you're trying to connect with people who don't have a clue about money or are not interested in it. You're not going to get there. It's, it's hard to get there and, and tap the, the massive amount of people that, that don't care at the moment or, or have no idea where to go. Yeah. Unless you open up and just give them something. So that was the, that was the goal with sufficient funds and that was the goal with you know, some of that stuff is... Just tell the story. Be you. I mean, I've, I, I'm sitting here in thongs at the moment. I do that with some of my, a lot of my clients, not all of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's just us. Yeah. Like I used to be very comfortable in a suit, but now I'm really not. And and I'm, you know, <laughs> you feel guilty. Okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in terms of like that client segmentation that's traditionally done, in terms of what qualifies a client to be able to get financial advice, how do you guys look at that? Because Obviously, um, you're going to be attracting uh, some younger people that maybe haven't accumulated a lot of net assets. Yep. Do they? Do you have something for them? What do you offer them? And how does it? What does that look like? We're trialing something at the moment, which is more general advice. Um, mm -hmm. So paying a fee for an hour on the on Zoom. Yep. Um, we haven't launched that yet, but we're just working out the ins and outs and whether we can do that and and make it work. Um, and uh, yeah, that that's one thing we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Um, and other than that, we also have the home loan side of the business. So mm. if they're far enough down the track to be a first home buyer, then we can help them. Mm -hmm. Um, if not, look, it's difficult. It is. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a, there's a massive, massive market out there for people who want to create courses that are, you know, low cost to be able to, you know, tap that market mm. and wake people up a little bit or just answer, solve little problems. I think mm. that's where the world's going is that, you know, the, the idea of paying an unknown amount for unknown advice mm. is, a, is, is the reason that we don't speak to the whole of the country. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot in between there that people, everyone's got money problems. Don't even speak to a quarter. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's funny, you know, in, in an interview the boys did with Andy Marshall, he was saying that advisors are kind of an aggregator of their clients' experiences. And the best advisors are good storytellers, almost verbatim to what you've kind of said today, right? And it's it's kind of interesting that, you know, an advisor's value to a client is just being the aggregator of those experiences, telling really wonderful stories. The ones that are doing really good business are the ones that naturally do it and the ones that are, mm. you know, they're, they're learning to do it. But it, it's kind of interesting, you know, it's 
by fluke, I guess it's, you know, there's, there's common themes here that, you know, advice. and, and that, that happens through, through blogging and those sorts of things. It's not an SOA. Mm. Um, you know, one of the things that I've often thought about, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, many others have as well is, you know, how, how, um, how much weight does an AFSL have in the future? You know, if we're getting more and more towards just providing helpful anecdotes to people and they apply that to their own lives, yeah. you know, where's the AFSL fit in? Well, you know, when a client walks out of the office super happy, it's the relationship, it's the conversations you've had, you've helped them do something, but it mm. wasn't, it wasn't grow their money. Like, yeah, some people do look at that, but mm. there's a certain segment of the market at the top end that care about that and that alone, because mm. that's, They've done. They've done everything else they need, and they, you know, they can work out their lifestyle goals themselves, and, yeah. and just go and do it. Yeah. But if they're not there yet, there's the values, you know. Yeah. In it, that stuff. Interestingly, though, you know, at, at our business, where we're fortunate enough to work with a, a you know, a seg, a, an older client base who who often do have the funds that that, you know, it's and their mandate for us is certainly not to go out there and, and earn them more money. It's it's this this sketchy. Don't lose it. Mm-hmm. You know, that I've built this up for my lifestyle and, and for the next. So, you know, even even at that level, we're certainly talking about what does that afford you? Yeah. You know, we, we, we know what the numbers are and that's 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 what it is. But, you know, what what does that afford? What's what's that give to the family and you know, security? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But even deeper, you know, what is security? Why? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, that's there's some awesome conversations even been had at that level. Yeah, it's not this sort of. I guess you call trend in terms of expanding the pie, but in terms of the discussion piece, it's it's not really a uh, age specific thing. It, it carries through the whole spectrum. Mm. Yeah, and that's I get actually that's probably um, I guess a good point of what how YOLO can work with um, a group of advisors that are spread across um, a few demographics mm. because the whole YOLO concept of for those you only live once. Uh, for anyone that didn't quite get that Spot yet. Spot on. Um, <laughs> might have been a few people Googling before. Just like, what, what's this yellow thing? Um, but, but for example, it applies to like some of uh, Andrew's clients would be up in the 60s plus. Yes, absolutely. Mm. I reckon it applies more so the older you are, right? You know, if you're young, you can be somewhat complacent because you've got time. And so, you know, you, you've got that to burn, so to speak. But Maybe you could transition if, into you don't have long. As, uh, <laughs> Y-D-H-L. Yeah. That'd be a good disturb, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that takes me back to Another blog. Um, <laughs> so James is actually uh, our MC for the first Sydney event for the year. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, threw me right under the bus. Yeah, I pretty much bullied him into it. Um, he was uh, he was a bit apprehensive. He's like, "What are you guys getting me to do here? What's the content?" I oh, still don't know. We're not quite sure what the content is yet, but we'll mate, you got a pretty solid out. panel. I think you'll be safe. Exactly right. I think they'll yeah. be challenging it's me. Power team. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah. a big. We got power um, team. we got Jess Brady, Adele Martin, and Catherine Gross. Yeah. So um, some awesome Heavy ladies. Hitters. With, yeah, all all got their own businesses. Mm. All been through some awesome journeys in starting them. Some more recent, some bit in the past, and. I think James's experience to understand what they've been feeling through that journey is pretty, um, like, he I knows what's going on. I can't on. wait. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's a perfect set, really. Um, yeah, and, and just, and also the different types of um, businesses they've got. Like, what Adele Martin's doing, like, she's mm. she's sort of, um, like, she's doing Facebook groups for clients. It's just, and she's going to that sort of, I guess, where James, it's similar sort of direction in terms of trying to get that, how do you get that one-to-many approach going on? Yeah. And it's um, and then like uh, Jess Brady has done. We're talking about the niching, like the niching she has done is phenomenal. And mm. if, um, there's a great podcast, uh, Fox and Hair. If anyone's uh, wants to check that out, it was really good. Um, we did with them last year, and it just talks about that journey. Awesome about how they've they've just started too, right? Mm. Yeah, it's only mm. it's been the last six months. Yeah. So and and like the awesome thing about them is it's a career change. They've, they've been in financial services, but they haven't been advisors. So mm. they know all the products. They've talked to advisors. They understand, um, like, a lot of the things that go goes on. It'll be interesting to hear a bit more about, shit, what, what's it like actually <laughs> delivering on that side yeah. of the yeah, fence? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah. Their, their theme and, you know, the, the essence I certainly get from their social media isn't a million miles from you guys. It's... You know, bucking the trend, not certainly not minded to be rolling around in in ties and suits and corporate. You know, it's it's, you know, if, if that's if that's what you like, then that's fine. But there's, mm. you know, the majority of the advice industry for you, where we're gonna go deep on on you know what we know and who we are, and is a, 
you know, a certain level of authenticity there. And you've got to admire that, like the likes of yourself, Jess, Adele, and, you know, it's, 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 it's admirable stuff. It's, you know. Well, and Catherine's, um, and she was Catherine, a life coach before yeah. she became an advisor. Yeah, she's, she's got an awesome business. And it's just her business model is like, if, yeah, if you haven't heard about it, there's a, there's a, we did a podcast with her last year as well. And yeah. you also get a whole lot of like, it's evolved even further. So like, mm. yeah. Come down to the event. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> we're, we're nice. having it down at um, the art house. Actually, art house, yeah, yeah. So it's um. It's Did you quite... ever go to the art house when you were younger? Oh, no. a couple of times. Yeah, we're we talking about the same art house. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the art house was an institution when I was eighteen. It was like absolute club, like yeah, four or five in the morning, all night, just like ears ringing, coming out when the sun's up. It was... Gangster rap R and B. No, no, no. It was like uh, like dance music, and yeah, it was it was one of the loosest places outside of the cross. <laughs> and I return what near ten years later, and <laughs> sounds like fun. <laughs> well, yeah, the problem I'm, a, I'm a country boy. I grew up yeah. in Grafton. And Newcastle, yeah. Newcastle's as far as I got until the end of uni, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez, we, the city would have been a scary place when you got down here. It was. It was so scary. We went to Brisbane first for a few years and then came down. <laughs> <laughs> but you get some pretty, uh, what do they call them? Bush doofs. Bush doofs, bush. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Said like but a true exactly city slicker. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, nah, it should, should be good. Um, I was saying to James earlier, we've got a mad, mad agenda this year just to get around the country with the events and, you know, I think we've set yeah, a pretty, pretty high bar. Yeah. Oh, we've already lined up some awesome peeps for the Brisbane event in, uh, in April and, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be good fun. Good mm. stuff. Yeah. It's all about getting the, uh, the personalities and people with different, uh, different angles on things, getting them out there and sharing it. Onwards and upwards. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Mm. And, and I suppose to, to wrap up, how's, uh, how's, how's the little one? She's amazing. Yeah, keeping us on our toes. She's, uh, I think we were talking before, she's she's um, falling off the bed. She dives onto the floor head first. Great. She smiles a lot, laughs a lot, <laughs> cries a bit. Um, but, yeah, she really keeping us on our toes. She's almost walking. and Ten months, you yeah. said, yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're both on the other side where we haven't had kids. And, like, you sort of have, have a couple that comes in. They've got a child. You're trying to sort of be empathetic and, like... <laughs> How much does that change? You're asking you... how I'm doing. Am I? Am I? Okay? Does, has that improved? <laughs> has that improved um, your engagement with people with children, clients with children, by having one? Like, oh, look, it changed. Look, everyone's obviously it's, it changes your life, and but of course, on the back of that, it's, it changes your perspective. So, yeah. yeah, you can, you can. I feel I'm more qualified to have the conversations now. Mm. I mean, you can, you always have them, but. Yeah. Now you you use it from a position of authority. Right? So, so people... just like lip service. Yeah, I've heard that that can be pretty tough. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> I'm not I'm not complaining, but it there's a, it's a challenge. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I get I get two or three hours less a night sleep than I used to enjoy. I feel um, like that. I mean, I'm uh, you're talking from a totally ignorant place here, but I feel like <laughs> the sleep thing would be a, a big factor. So if you've got a, a little kid that sleeps well, then then that would be a saving grace. I imagine. Yeah. Well, I think there's a trade off. Like you lose sex for kid time. Like... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if kid time replaces that. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, before Adrian and I spend too much time talking about kids, I reckon we should probably. Oh, five minutes doesn't equate three hours, does it? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, dude. That's that's awesome. You've been uh, yeah really generous to to come down and, and shoot the breeze. It's an awesome story. Um, so, so how do you, cause it's a different spelling sufficient funds. I'm just thinking sufficient funds with a Z. So yeah. we decided to call it YOLO. Um, that was corny enough. I thought I could get away with putting a Z on the back mainly because I'd have to pay five grand to, to put an S on it to get the domain. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. so I didn't bother. Yeah. Especially uh, if the ATM card's still bouncing, it, right? Exactly. Right. <laughs> and it is. No. Yeah. The self-employed so. advisor. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Sufficientfunds.com. And, uh, yeah, if you want to check out the challenges and what we're doing, Facebook's probably a good good place to go, YOLO, financial services. Yeah, no, awesome. And you're, you're active on the group, so if everyone's got questions, you know, I'm sure you Absolutely, be to yep. It's one of the nice things, right? Everyone's just, you know, sharing what they're doing. And, Collaboration. Yeah. It's one yeah. thing we don't do enough of. Mm, yeah, yeah, totally. Well, mate, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Stoked uh, to be here. We'll see you at the event. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks. Cheers.